It feels like your birthday because it's a package from China. Welcome to the Wicked Gamer Hand Collector. It's awesome that you're tuning in because we're going to take a close look at the Sup Gamebox 4 on the 1 Plus Edition. I've released many reviews about these, let's say, 8 bit handhelds, and they are keep releasing them every single year. But what I find so interesting is that every year we're going to get different ones, different form factors, different models, different kind of game amount. You name it, they change it out. This one comes with an AV out cable, so we have an option to plug it into a television and Nowadays we're going to get these very horrible cheap micro USB sh cables, just freaking depressing. Then we're having here the manual, the toilet manual, pa toilet paper manual like always. Hey, it doesn't say sub this time. <laughs> okay. So you can see they are just reusing the manuals too. Get some quick explanation what you can do, reset function, volume control, and adi adi blah blah. Nobody reads these things. So the sub handheld itself. The sub handheld itself is more like the same handheld most of the time when it comes to the layout, the functionalities, and this time we're going to get new kind of batteries. And why do I say new edition? Very simple, because we're going to get more like new sticker. When I'm looking at the specifications of the battery, it's still the same like 1020 milliamp. I know they're bigger ones. If they're going to fit in this casing, I don't know for sure. It's highly possible. But let's take a close look at all the other features before going to get this stupid battery. Why does this freaking thing doesn't go in? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I always want to record something, something like this happens. Okay, so at the front we're going to get the D-pad. The D-pad is super sturdy. It got a quite long travel. This is not a very comfortable D-pad. Reset, A, B, X, Y. We're having four buttons. My a bit normally going to get two buttons for controlling the game. The other ones are just the turbo. Select start. And there's not a lot to talk about, like the on-off switch, micro USB for charging, AV out, the tiny jack connection, and we're having here at the left bottom corner a volume control. But yeah, nevertheless, let's power it on. And let's take a close look at it. The mono speaker over here doesn't sound that bad. Oh man, that is really horrible. Man, man. Mm -mm. Okay, so the game collection, it's exactly the same like the previous model, I can say. And the reason why I'm saying that I know for sure, if you're looking at the game list. So most of the time we're going to get the 400 to 501. It's more like the old school multi-game cards or a NES on chip, as they like to call it. And you just slap it on a multi-game card or an, let's say a game console or an handheld like this one. So there are quite some different games on it, a lot of homebrew games, and this means more like games that we have never seen before. Nowadays with the new generation of NES clones, we can see these homebrew games built in, more like non-licensed games. I always like to call it like the licensed games are like the naughty games you like to use on this. So resetting the system, we bring you back to the main menu, then you need to choose your freaking language every time. There are some handhelds out there that doesn't have this future, but nevertheless let's play some games and let's see how good is the emulation itself. Oh, the D-pad is really bad. The display itself is not that great either. Got the same view angle like always. It's a little bit better compared with the first generation of 8-bit stuff I've reviewed. Of course, we're going to get a shitload of screen tearing. You can see when you're walking, the palm trees are moving very strangely. And that's what we're mostly going to get with these cheap handhelds. I'm gonna say the A B button are not that bad. Turbo button! Woo! Oh yeah. Oh cool, I can slap the stones. So fun fact is that with these NES handhelds, it's more like a hit or miss with the system itself. I did see some reviews of other people or other products I've reviewed myself, is that we're having so many differences between the system qualities and also with this Game Box Sub, what do what call these things? Mini Game Boys, whatever. But the emulation is not bad at all. Especially when you listen to the music. 
Fun fact is when you get him to play a little bit more with his handheld, you get used to the D-pad, that's so sturdy. Hmm. Okay, so a great game to test out the D-pad. Hmm. All the sound effects are here. I have here a lot of these 8-bit stuff and sometimes you're just missing out sound effects. Dude, just come here, I want to kick you in the balls. Or in the face. Here it comes, here it comes. This song is going to get stuck in your head. Oh crap, he's slapping me with a stick. Kick him on the knee. Come on. <laughs> so this is one of these homebrew games I was talking about. So basically this is a combination of Pikachu with Tetris. Because you can not tell me there was an actual game back in the day. So you have a lot of weird stuff going on and there are basically all kinds of games on it. Okay, so the TV out cable is a little bit short and that is a, such a big bummer in my opinion. Yeah, for the money we can't complain. So it's basically plug and play, you don't need to do any configuration. So plug in the cable, put them on the card and let's play. I have been noticed with these cheap handhelds is that when you're having the TV out function, we're having some lines on the screen itself. So the signal output is pretty poor and you can hear some interference on the signal. The D-pad is still very responsive. Oh man, I love this game so much. I've played it so much as a child. It's a very nice game to test out the D-pad, especially when you need to jump. Okay, let's try the turbo button. Let's go cheesy mode. Oh yeah, turbo mode. Oh, I got slept in the... Oh yeah! Woo! Alright folks, that is what you're going to get with the sub handheld from our friends from China. And I must say, there are a lot of different versions out there. Take that in consideration. This is just another Game Boy Mini sub version. It comes with 400 games. It's the Plus Edition. We also have more like the Loose Edition with controllers. But it's your very cheap build quality. The build quality is exactly the same like all the many years. But I did notice there's a minor improvement with the LCDs they are using in combination with the emulation. And this is more like a cheap handheld. I think you pay around 50 bucks for it normally. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hitting the bell, become one of the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.